We're in the Information Age Gallery at the Science Museum in London. This gallery looks at the last 200 years of information and communication technologies, but it doesn't just take a technological approach, it actually looks at the social and economic changes that have happened to us with these amazing new technologies. Behind me is the rugby tuning coil. This incredible, awe-inspiring object is, represents all of the cables and networks that span our globe today. It was used to send out signals from Rugby Radio Station, which had a call sign of GBR. This radio station could send messages right the way across the world because it used very low frequency signals and they can actually curve right the way around the Earth while sending very small amounts of information through things like Morse code. I love this object because it looks like a vast spider's web of cables and wood and to me it really just represents this incredible change that's happened in our communication technologies. This gallery is broken up into six sections in this film, I'm just going to talk about six stories, one for each network. One of the most important moments in the birth of the electric telegraph in the 19th century was the creation of the first transatlantic telegraph cable. In 1858, signals were sent between Valentia in Ireland and Newfoundland in Canada for the very first time. These were incredibly weak signals. They had to travel a long way through cables. And so a new type of instrument was developed, something called a mirror galvanometer. William Thompson, otherwise known as Lord Kelvin, was the scientist who created this instrument. And he used this to receive these very, very small signals as they came across the Atlantic. Imagine the celebrations when Britain and America could send messages almost instantly for the first time. President Buchanan sent Queen Victoria a message and everybody celebrated. But celebrations only lasted for a short time because a few weeks later the cable failed and they had to start again. And it wasn't until 1865 that a permanent connection between Britain and America was established. On a foggy morning in 1922, this machine behind me was used to send out the first radio signals for the BBC. Known as 2LO, it sent radio signals to London and represents the birth of state broadcasting in Britain. The object is gorgeous to look at. It has these enormous glass valves that were used to amplify the signal and this stop button that if it all went horribly wrong, you could stamp on to close the machine down. To me, I just love the idea that it's all home-built and homemade, and really shows the thinking of the engineers as they use this transmitter to send out messages from Savoy Hill on the Strand in London. 2LO Marconi House London calling. 2LO Marconi House London calling. From this point, just a few radio enthusiasts were receiving the signals, but it didn't take long for the whole of Britain to access the BBC. It's amazing to think that by 1953 the Queen's coronation was being broadcast to millions of people watching televisions at home and today we have digital television on demand when we want it. In the exchange, one of the stories we tell about the telephone is the creation of the first transatlantic telephone cable, the TAT-1. The TAT-1 was laid between Oban in Scotland and Nova Scotia in Canada and it used a series of repeaters or amplifiers to send the signal. What we're standing in front of here is one of the rigid repeaters that was used right at the bottom of the sea. And in 1957, the black activist and singer Paul Robeson gave a concert live between New York and London. Hello, Paul, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Oh, wonderful. Welcome over, right? Oh, I can't tell you. That's Let wonderful. <laughs> Hello, hello, hello. And the crowds were delighted. They raised money to pay for the phone line during the concert, and Paul Robeson's voice could be heard. He was able to do this because the TAT-1 allowed high quality sound and was also very inexpensive. The 
constellation looks at the satellites that are currently orbiting our Earth to make our connected lives possible. Behind me is the Eurostar 3000 satellite, a real satellite that has a sister currently orbiting the Earth to send telephone messages, internet and television messages across the world. We tell lots of different stories about satellite communications. In the web section, we look at the birth of computer networks, and perhaps the most familiar network to all of us today is the World Wide Web. Behind me is the object that Sir Tim Berners-Lee used to create the first ever web pages. In 1989, he created a document, something rather boringly called Information Management, a proposal. And he sent this to his boss, Mike Sendall. Mike Sendall looked at it and wrote at the top, vague but exciting. And from that, the World Wide Web was born. They bought this computer, the next, and Tim used it to design the very first fledgling web pages and to host a website. You can actually see on the computer, it says, this machine is a server, do not power it down. And so if you turned off this computer, you would have been turning off the World Wide Web something that is absolutely inconceivable to us today. In Cameroon, they hadn't enjoyed the same kind of landline infrastructure that we had in the West. And in 1997, the telecommunications market was liberalized, which meant that lots of new companies could be set up. The owner of this call box would have a mobile phone and would allow people to pay for a small amount to use a phone to make a call or to receive a call. This was because mobile phones at this time were still really expensive. Only a few years later, the mobile phone became so cheap that many people could hope to own their own. And today in Cameroon, the majority of the population will have a phone in their pocket. When I was creating the gallery, the thing I really wanted to do was look at the experience of change from each of these new technologies. So we think that we're living in this incredible modern age with the internet and mobile phones, but what we discovered is the experience of our predecessors was very similar and they were just as inspired by their new technologies when it happened to them. This is a new world where the network is there for everyone.